All right, guys, what you're looking at here, this is gonna be a real quick video. Uh, this is a homemade hot tank for parts. Um, I posted this on my Facebook and my Instagram and I had a few people asking me if I'd make a quick little video, so here we go. All it is is a 55 gallon metal drum. I cut it down, it's 22 inches tall. As you can tell, I cut it right above this rib to keep the rigidity of the tank. These ribs actually give these tanks uh, strength so i kept the top one that way if i cut it below it it probably would have kind of been a little soft but anyhow it's 22 inches tall um i'm running it off of propane and what i've done is i took a fish cooker and i took the let me sl slide this piece of metal out i took a fish cooker and i took the burner system off of it it has a little bolt on the very bottom as you can see so all I've done is took this 4x4 tubing that I used to build the barbecue grill stacks, drilled a hole in the end of it, bolted this to this, and you can see it's about maybe an inch away from the bottom of this tank. Slide it in the middle of it, light it, voila. As you can see, the water's pretty nasty now. Originally, it started out, I had 30 gallons of water to one and a half gallon of Purple Power degreaser. I'll show it to you right there um, I let it simmer in here uh, I brought the temperature up through parts in it brought the temperature up uh, to about 212 degrees right whenever it got to a good rolling boil left the parts in there for about another hour after that and uh, shut the gas off started pulling parts out as I pulled them out I would wash them off with a pressure washer and it worked out great and before anybody says anything about ventilation I've got a big shop door right there. I do have a vent fan right there. I will go ahead and work this for you. Just so you know, I keep this piece here for when I'm not using it so the wind does not try to flap that. But I turn it on with this control and as you can see, yeah. Anyhow, I don't wanna hear the comments about, oh my God, you should have ventilation because I do have ventilation. Anyhow, not only do I have that shop door right here i've also got a big 14 foot shop door here i've also got my side door shop right there yes my shop is a wreck because i use my shop anyhow i'm going to show you after i took the parts out pressure washed them i'm going to show you how well they cleaned up these are some of the bolts that i put in there i use a wire wheel clean the heads of them afterwards these are your rocker trays that your rockers are going to set on for an ls motor uh, all I done was pressure wash these, did not buff them, polish them or anything. As you can see, they turned out like they were brand new. That is a idler. As you can see, that thing turned out like it was new. Here is a water pump. This is <laughs> this is your pulley that's on it. Um, when it's pressure washing, you see it blew some of the paint off. Uh, did not take no wire wheel to this. As you can see the back side of it. Back side looks even better than the front side in my opinion. It all looks brand new. And I don't want to hear anybody say anything about, oh my God, you put a water pump in a parts washer. I'm just experimenting on this part right here. I just wanted to check it out, see how well it would do. This is the first part that I done. I'm not gonna reuse this water pump. I'm building a brand new motor. I'm not reusing a water pump. Uh, there's my timing gear. That is my um, cam plate, covers up my cam. That all turned out great. This is a pulley for your power steering pump. No, that is not paint, that is raw metal. I did take a wire wheel to this part because it looked like this. Raw metal, you can tell it's like an etched. You can tell the chemical kind of etched it a little bit. But I was fine with that. Uh, I'll paint this right here and she looks just snazzy. This looks oily because it is. I put some oil on it to keep this windage tray to keep from flash rusting. We all know how nasty those things are. All I've done is pressure washed it after I took it out. There is your oil pickup tube. That thing turned out good. Didn't have to do any kind of cleaning on that. That's all pressure washed. The heads. This was the main reason why I built this tank. 
because I did not like how nasty the heads looked. You know, I'm doing a fresh rebuild on this motor and I wanted it to look pretty decent. I'm not gonna paint these heads. I want, I want to, as far as right now, I'm not gonna paint them. If I do paint them, it's gonna be back to an aluminum color. But right now, this is a night and day difference. I'll add some pictures into this video so you'll be able to see what they look like before. But as you can see down in here, everything turned out great. I'll show you the bottom of the head. As you can see, all I done was pressure wash that. This was a machine surface. I had these heads decked, but the rest of it, all of this, nothing was touched. Everything is completely from the parts washer to the power washer. Uh, all the valves, I took those out and I did use a wire wheel on those. I had a short video on my um, Facebook. I showed, Instagram I showed. So if you look at the valve covers, to me, they turned out amazing. Um, I thought I kind of failed at this because I took the valve covers out and I thought, well, they still looked the same. They didn't look too good. But once it dried, it really looked amazing. This one looks even better. It looks brand new. So, again, just a simple little 55-gallon uh, drum. As you can see, there's the other part that I did cut off of it. There's the part of the fish cooker that I used. Uh, purple power, a gallon and a half of purple power to 30 gallon of water. Worked perfect. I hope this helps you guys. It's not hard to build and it worked out great. But if you are going to do this, yes, you do need ventilation. Uh, keep your lid on it and don't keep a lid on it to where it's going to be real tight. Just something just to hold down on top um, because the steam is going to want to get out. So don't put no weights on top of your lid. You don't want to blow something up. Um, but anyhow, Plenty of ventilation, because I'm pretty sure you don't need to be breathing this in. I did this inside because where I live it right now, it's nothing but raining outside and the wind is blowing, so it wouldn't have worked out very well. So, inside is where I done it. No, I was not in my shop while this stuff was going. I let it go, go kept my shop opened, and I'd come out here periodically and check, make sure everything was good, and go right back in. Whenever I came back out and the water was boiling and I checked the temperature, that's when I said, okay, I can shut it all off. And then I stayed out here cleaning parts. Until next time, guys, God bless. Have a good one.